Hi, Paul here from Easy Composites, and today we're going to be looking at microporous vacuum consumables and how they can be used to improve the reliability and consistency of your resin infusions. I'll be going over the materials themselves, so going through the working principles, and then we'll move on to do a few examples which hopefully will help to illustrate how these materials might be of benefit in your project. If you're new to resin infusion, it might be worth going and having a look through our back catalogue of videos where we cover resin infusion process in a lot more detail. So what are these materials and how do they work? Well, you can think of them in much the same way as the brand Gore-Tex, the waterproof outdoor clothing. And what we have is a microporous membrane that will allow air to pass through it, but once saturated with resin, will almost completely seal off. And this is advantageous because it allows us to maintain an air channel to any uninfused areas of the part, which is particularly useful on large or complex infusions. Let's have a look at some of these microporous materials from our range. Here we have the MTI hose. Now this is a product that many of you might already be familiar with. It's the industry leading microporous vacuum line from the manufacturer DD Compound. This has a very, very high performance microporous membrane on the outside. This is backed up with a breather layer which maintains a good vacuum to the surface. And then we have a spiral down the core which maintains the air channel. Now, this is a very, very reliable product. It's very easy to use. It's very flexible and pliable. The next one we have here is the MVL. Now, you can think of this as just a low cost alternative to the MTI. And in many ways, it will perform exactly the same function. The primary disadvantage with this is it is more difficult to seal on the ends. It's more difficult to seal to the hose. It's slightly less pliable. And also the membrane that's used isn't quite as high performance, so it will allow a small amount of resin in some circumstances to pass through. Finally, we have the MVS strip. Now this, in terms of functionality, does exactly the same job as the two lines, but it's in a flat format. And where this is useful is if you need to maintain a vacuum into the center of a part, the flat format won't print onto the surface. If we were to use a hose format product, the bag would bridge over the top, you will get an impression on the part and it will leave an imperfection. Whereas these flat format versions don't do that. So they're ideal for any times when you want to maintain a vacuum in the center of a part. So from a sort of outside in infusion. Now the way that this works is much the same way. We have a mesh here that maintains the air channel instead of the spiral. We've got a layer of impervious film on the back and then we have the microporous membrane on the bottom there. The tests that we're going to be running are specifically designed to create the sorts of situations that you might find yourself in in a large or complicated infusion. So I'm going to be running the resin inlet very close to the vacuum port. And what this is going to do is going to ensure that the resin front meets the vacuum port before the entire panel is infused. Normally you'd be doing everything you can to avoid this, but on a large or complicated infusion, quite often you will find that you haven't quite predicted the resin flow perfectly, and these situations very often do occur. The two samples we've got here are three plies of 210 gram 2-2 twill. One I'm going to run without the MTI system, and the other I'm going to run with the MTI hose. The final sample we have here is being run with a five millimeter core. And the reason why I've set this sample up is it creates a very common situation that you will find where the bridging that comes around the edge of the core creates a resin pathway. And it acts almost like a spiral and the resin will quickly track around the outside of the core and then have to infuse inwards. And that will very often, particularly on large core sections, leave dry spots or pinhole areas in the center. So there are ways to mitigate this. Normally you would put a chamfer on the edge of the foam and that will help. But this is again just to exaggerate the results and hopefully illustrate the way that these materials perform. Onto these samples, we're just going to set up a standard infusion stack. So that's a layer of peel ply and then a layer of infusion mesh. And then we can set up the vacuum lines. So here we have our first test set up. So this is our control sample with the resin infusion and the vacuum line just laid conventionally. And now we're going to connect up the MTI. So we're going to feed the resin in in exactly the same location. And then our vacuum connection is going to be in basically the same location in the far corner here. But then we're going to run the MTI line all the way down the side of the bag here. And what we need to do first is connect a hose onto the MTI line. You can't use a conventional um, resin infusion connector for this, you need to breach the bag using the vacuum line. So first of all, we just place the hose inside the MTI line, and then we just seal that down using some gum tape. And this is very, very simple with the MTI hose to do. Just wrap that around, making sure that we've got good contact all the way around. And then we need to do the same thing at the far end. So again, just taking some of the sealant tape, flattening out the hose, 
placing it over the top there and then folding the sealant tape carefully around ensuring that we get a good contact and seal. And after that, to stop this from sticking to everything else, you can put the backing tape back on. With the vacuum line sealed onto the hose, we now need to breach the bag. So again, it just uses some of the vacuum bagging sealant tape, and you just do a simple wrap around the outside of your vacuum hose, and then that can be placed onto the seal of the part, and that breaches the vacuum through into the bag. The setup we have here for the MVS strip is slightly different. The first thing we have is uh, we're running a spiral around the perimeter on this setup. Uh, this is quite a conventional way that you would set up an infusion. And remember, we've got that core inside. And what we should see is some tracking around the outside. So to seal the MVS strip and connect the MVS strip to the vacuum, it's slightly different from the MTI. We can place a resin infusion connector on the inside here. And then we need to seal this using some sealant tape. So we just need to place that on the inside of the strip there, run it across like so, remove the backing, seal the foil down onto it. And then after doing one side, just take another strip of sealant tape and then place it across the back there. That does a very good job of sealing it. And then finally, a belts and braces approach is to use some duct tape placed over the top of that. These tests are now ready to be sealed into the bags and a vacuum pulled. But before doing that, I thought it'd be a good opportunity to just show you how to seal up the MVL, because it is slightly different to the MTI hose. And as we're not using this in any of these tests, because actually the performance is very similar, I thought we'd just go through how this is done. So just take some sealant tape and place it inside the hose first. Give it a good squeeze and then fold it back on itself over the top of the hose. And then finally, just some duct tape over the top of that, fold it over and then tightly sealed around it. If you do that, you can cut off any excess should you wish to and that will be a very, very good seal on this line. With everything in place, the bagging film can now be sealed down. The bag's now sealed, so now we just need to connect up the resin feed lines and the vacuum lines. The feed lines um, and vacuum lines on most of these are just done in a conventional way, and in fact, actually, on the MVS strip, it still is. We're just piercing through two layers, down onto the inside, then inserting the PVC hose into it and sealing it up with sealant tape. We're now ready to draw the vacuum down on these. We'll be pulling the vacuum through the microporous membrane and this will slow the airflow down so the drawdown speed will be longer. On something small and flat like this, it really doesn't make much difference, but on a large molding where there's a greater volume of air in the bag, it's a good idea to draw the bags down first on the resin feed line and then switch over to the microporous line. The bags have now all been pulled down and I've performed a drop test so I know that they're perfectly sealed. All I've got to do now is mix up the resin and start the infusions. The resin used is the IN2 infusion resin. As these panels are very small, I'm using the fast hardener as there'll still be sufficient pot life. With the first test, you can see that the resin front meets the vacuum line before the part has even halfway infused. In order not to draw too much resin through the part, the vacuum line is clamped off at this point. Now, because the rest of the part is almost at full vacuum, it will continue to infuse for a surprisingly long way, only stopping at the very last point where the air pressure in front of the infusion reaches equilibrium with the resin pressure. If you did have an absolutely perfect vacuum and no air or off-gassing coming from the resin, theoretically, the part would fully infuse. However, this is only good in theory, and in practice, an incomplete infusion is almost unavoidable. There is a trick to fixing situations like this that have unintentionally been keeping a secret, so look out for this in a future video. With the second trial, you can see that with the MTI hose, this problem is eliminated entirely, as the vacuum is maintained into the dry area until the part is fully infused. 
Now, this is clearly a very basic setup to make the function of these microporous vacuum lines clear to understand, but in service, the MTI would typically be run around large sections of the perimeter on complicated infusions. The final setup with the core and MVS strip will show the typical resin tracking problem. You'll notice that the resin loops entirely around the core, meaning that without the MVS strip, a portion of the center would be left isolated from the vacuum. On a small part like this, you would probably get away with it, but certainly on larger cores, you would expect dry areas or pinholes caused by this effect. Resin tracking like this can also occur on complex geometries and laminates that have a large variation in thickness. All three tests have now fully infused, so our first standard infusion setup, we've clamped off the vacuum line. And the reason we needed to do that is we were already drawing resin off, and if we just left this open, we'd be draining off an excess amount of resin into the catch pot. With the MTI and the MVS, we're still connected to the vacuum, so at the moment, these lines are still at vacuum, but you'll notice that we're drawing off no excess resin. Now, a common misconception with this is that it will allow you to overcome a leak in the bag. Unfortunately, that's simply not the case. That's because once these materials are surrounded with resin, they become almost completely impervious to air. And so maintaining a vacuum really serves no purpose, and it certainly couldn't overcome a leak. So it's still absolutely essential that you make sure that the bags are fully sealed before starting an infusion. One advantage that does come with this, though, is it makes the clamping off point for your vacuum line much less critical. Here, we're 20 minutes after the infusion, and our vacuum lines are still completely dry. Alongside that, it comes with the advantage that any resin that's entered the part stays in the part. So getting an accurate resin to fibre fraction is very straightforward when working with these materials. So we're going to now clamp the vacuum lines off, as we've just discussed, they're serving no purpose at this stage. And we're going to leave these to cure at room temperature and come back and take a look at the results. Looking at the results, the first control example that we've got here has got a large dry area in the corner. Now we could see that in the infusion that it never fully infused. So what we're left with is the stack of materials just simply dry. But what wasn't apparent on the back of the infusion is these other dry pinhole areas. Now these are caused by air getting mixed in with the resin during the infusion, because as the infusion was taking place, the vacuum pressure was sort of dropping off. And so we are left with lots of void pinhole areas over a large proportion of this part. So clearly this is severely compromised. With the second example, which was essentially the same infusion, just with the MTI, you should straight away be able to see that we've got a completely void-free surface. So there's no pinholes in this at all. And that's because the MTI hose was maintaining a vacuum right until the end of the infusion. So you can clearly see a dramatic difference between these two cases. In the case of the third test, done with the core material and the MVS strip, first thing you'll notice is the print around the edge of the core. Now that's nothing to do with the vacuum level, that will happen whenever you've got a large bridge section in your carbon. But apart from that, you will notice that the part is again entirely pinhole free. So the MVS strip has done its job. If we hadn't have used the MVS strip, we'd likely get some small pinholes just in the area where the resin front had closed in. On larger core materials, that would become a more of a problem and you might get a dry area in the, in the core. But in using the MVS strip, we're maintaining the vacuum into those central locations and alleviating the problem almost entirely. So let's try to draw some conclusions. When and where would I suggest using these materials? Well, they can be particularly useful if you're new to resin infusion because often without experience, it's quite difficult to predict the flow front of resin. And so being able to put the vacuum into lots of areas of your molding can massively increase your chances of success. You'll notice that in a lot of our infusion videos, we haven't used these materials. And the reason for that's twofold. The first is I've got a lot of experience with resin infusion, and so I can quite accurately predict how the flow front's going to move. And also the parts are generally fairly simple. And so in using these materials wouldn't really bring many advantages. The situations where I would use them though, is if I was doing a larger or very complicated infusion, maybe there's a risk of tracking around core materials or features. And in these situations, the added reliability and security that microporous materials can bring would more than offset their cost by increasing the chances of getting a successful infusion. I really hope you found the information in this video useful. If you are interested in including these materials in your production process, head over to the Easy Composites website where we have these materials available to purchase alongside a wide range of composites, tools, equipment, and materials. 
As ever, a huge thank you to all of our customers whose support makes producing these videos possible, and we'll see you next time.